The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the October 4th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to figure out what those bulls and bears are communicating to you and I at just uh, past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in. Stevie has got your back. Send me an email. Please send it early. Send it to steve at tfnn.com. And inside that subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside the Tiger's Den, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on fabulous Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. we got a sea of green out there. All the US indices that we track are trading to the upside. Dow's up 113, S&P 27, NASDAQ 163, Russell 27, semis up 80, trendies up 41, gold trading up eight bucks, silver's 45 pennies, natural gas is down nine cents, 30-year treasuries printing off a point to nine ticks, at 122.06, and lace recruit is up 90 cents, printed out at 74.62. Now, I didn't get a chance. Uh, well, let, let me first tell you the leaders to the upside, uh, dollar wise. Uh, you got ServiceNow up 16 bucks, Apogee Enterprises 15 bucks, 21% there. Uh, Mon God is up 14 bucks or 3%. Powell Industries is up 13 bucks, 5%. Abercrombie and Fitch is up 12 bucks. That's a 9% move. Our shaker to the downside is led by BlackRock, off 15 bucks, 1.5%. Argenics down about 12 bucks, 2%. Uh, Equifax down ten dollars, three percent. Public storage seven bucks, two percent. Dr. Horton is off four percent. That's a seven dollar move to the downside. Unfortunately, I missed the uh, eleven a.m. update. My apology. It was just uh, got quite frankly, it was a total brain fart sitting in the chair, not paying attention to the clock. In any event, let's go ahead and do that now. It just gives us a bit of an overview of the markets. If we take a look at the ES Mini, ES Mini continues to consolidate with inside its daily profile, 55.20 to 55.31. Spot VIX is moving lower, but not until it closes below the 50-day expense moving average will buyers have, uh, have an edge. The 50 days at 1740 were printed at 1924. Uh, if we take a look at the NQ, a consolidation with inside its daily profile, that range between 19907 and 2357. What's the U.S. dollar index doing? It's rallying. It's right now looks like it'll close above the center of that bullish structured daily profile. That center line is at 10202. If that, in fact, unfolds at day's end, we should see a move to 10270. If we take a look at gold, the consolidation with inside its daily profile needs a close above 2694.90 to negate a TD9 count top. Even if it does that, though, you still have profile resistance at 2708. Silver would uh, negate its TD9 count top with a close above 3261. We're at 3272. It'll negate its, I'm sorry, we're at, uh, we're not at that. We're at uh, 3229. Hold on a minute. 3293. Jeez Louise, Stevie. Get your act together. A close above 3272 will negate, well, will be a close above the top of its daily profile as well. And that'll tell us that silver is on the move higher. Um, we'll take a look at A to B equal CD patterns during the. Um, you know, we review metals out there, lights be crude. You can see an A to B equal CD pattern. It's attained that one to one level. That move off that C point, though, 
is so strong, you're likely to see a move to 76.24, 78.93. We know there's a TD9 count top inside of natural gas. That was tested earlier this morning. That was rejected. Now we're getting back inside a profile. A close today below 289. We should see a move back to 277. The 30-year Treasury, I think somebody was maybe Robert was looking for a buy Wanted to get long the 30-year Treasury, cautioned him about doing that. And now what we have here is an A to B equals CD pattern of the downside with price uh, attaining that one-to-one -one price level. Now, what you'd be watching for here, Robert, anybody looking to possibly take a long position inside the 30-year would be some type of bullish reversal candle. Short of that, price continues to move lower. Its next price projection level at about 120.26. So that's the overview that, unfortunately, Stevie didn't do at 11, but he did it at 11.10. So that should help us out. Now, um, what else do we want to take a look at? Let's do kind of our normal routine out here. Where are we at in that New York Stock Exchange advanced decline oscillator? We are below zero. It says that uh, sellers are the ones that have control. We already covered the spot VIX, which is traded above its 50-day exponential moving average. Well, you could fool me with regard to sellers are the ones that have control. But that's what its message was. Let's see on the rally this morning. What have we done? Well, we got the ES mini above the Apogee pivot point down there. That says right now this rally is real, and you could expect even a further rally. The NQ also trading above that Apogee pivot point. Now it has resistance inside the ES between on a 30-minute basis between 57.89 and 57.98. In the case of the NQ, it's up at the 22.63 level. If we take a look at Goldilocks, it's well above its pep, uh, Apogee pivot point. Looks like this wants to rally higher. Silver the same. Lights recruit the same, and the uh, U.S. dollar index also the same out there. Yes, we've got the dollar higher. The market higher gold and silver higher out there what's that mean uh, that means that uh, that means that there's a lot of nervous people overseas out there and they want everything and anything us out there well let's take a look at let's stay on this chart here uh, we'll use this uh, later when we come back to uh, answer the question from Hector and Patty about the GDX what direction do we think that it's going likely to head to next and how are we going to make that determination well one of the things that we certainly want to take a look at is uh, as soon as Stevie can find it is gold priced in the major currencies now if we take a good Goldilocks right now in US dollars we are not at new all-time highs well well this is actually in the uh, my apology I'll get to the one in major currencies this is the one by the way that we're taking like gold priced in all of the uh, major currencies in the Middle East out there now we're at new uh, new highs today in uh, Iranian real kind of makes sense out there it's certainly likely to be some activity perhaps this weekend we're up at new highs in Syrian pounds we are up at uh, new highs in the Israeli shekel out there uh, now let's take a look at gold in the major currencies out here although we're not a new all-time high in the terms of uh, US dollars we are in euros we are in yen we are in pounds we are in Canadian loonie we are in the krona we are in Aussie dollars we are in the Chinese one we are in Swiss franc that tells us we have a international global rally going on here. Again, if we take a look at what's going on inside the S&P 500, we'll also see that uh, all these uh, international markets are trading higher today out there. We've got global flow of capital that is coming into the U.S. We can see it right here in front of our eyes. So when we get to the GDX question, let's just make sure that we keep this in mind out there. Why? Because we know that the GDX, the mining equities, and uh, gold are directionally correlated out there. All right, what else can we share with you? Well, one other thing I should share with you is this is the chart here for the DAX. The DAX closes at 11.30, I believe. Yeah, at 11.30. And we can see that we're up towards its uh, up towards the high of the day. We're not at the high of the day, but we're up towards the high of the day. What does that tell us? Well, we know about the directional correlation between the DAX and the NASDAQ. The rally of the NASDAQ is likely to hold. Now, are we at the high of the day just yet? Uh, we are not even near the high of the day, right? We've traded down lower. But because of that directional correlation, you know, pay attention to the DAX. We'll be right back, Chris. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? 
one simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's uh, take a look at uh, the NQ out here. Now, uh, it's the 30-minute time frame chart that was really the one that was generating the message uh, earlier this morning. You know, we had the jobs numbers come out at 8.30. Then we had, and you can see this is the wide-ranging bar right here, bar number seven on my screen. That was the 30 minutes from 9 to 9. Uh, that was the uh, 9 o'clock uh, time frame. Uh, move out there just you know just moving up to the uh, you know just look like okay we were just simply going to rally right no because when we took a look at the 30 minute time frame chart this morning both the ES and the NQ were showing that they were going to go ahead and uh, form TD9 counts so bar number eight took place at 9 30 this morning inside the NQ we can see that the first price target for the NQ was the oscillator and change line which it got to actually close below it at uh, 10 a.m out there and then uh, price uh, continued to find resistance at a green oscillator and change line and went ahead and tested the breakout level support at 2009 uh, 75. Now the work to the downside at that stage was uh, done, right? We had a top Price got back to support. Support held. Uh, that's why I put into the tiger's den those people that were short. Be careful. This is the time to be cautious right now because of the because of this pattern. Because it's a 30 minute time frame chart. It was only the 30 minute time frame chart that had this topping signal out there. Now we can see that the NQ is trading above that green oscillator and change line. As long as that remains, which is right here about 2111, price should go target that 2263 level. That's when we take a look at the 30 minute time frame chart. Now that we've been trading for a couple of hours are there any additional signals out here you know we're trading in resistance on the 240 minute time frame chart right now that's up at the uh hard to read that way let me see if i can do it like this go back oh, that's at the 2122 level that's an easy way to do that so if price can close about 2122 that would signal we should see a further rally anything else out here worth noting nah 
Not that I can really – a two-hour time frame chart had that uh, – even if we put an A to B equal CD pattern because that bearish shooting star candle price got down and tested support, which was that oscillator and change line at the 2011 uh, level out there. So maybe all we just have out here, nothing to get too excited about one way or the other, just a consolidation with inside the daily profile, which the range is 19907 to 2357 out there. So let's let's leave this. I, we don't have many requests. We've got five right now. Not that that's not many. Uh, but uh, let's go take a look at those before I continue diving into these charts, for example, looking at the ES and so forth. So let's look at the, the first two came in yesterday. Uh, my apology, just wasn't able to get to them uh, when they came in. The first one is from, uh, uh, the first two are from DQ. And DQ wants to take a look at BX. That's the charts that we've got up on our screen right now. And we take a look at this that uh, was looking for an entry area. So we take a look at these charts out here. What do we see? We see that there's the potential for a TD9 count bottom, uh, it would need to spike below yesterday's low. And yesterday's low was really at the bottom of its daily profile out there. So that low yesterday was at 152.54. The bottom of the profile is at 149.75. So if price can tick below, I'm sorry, 149.79 was yesterday's low. Um, you'd love to see it tick below that, whether it's today, to uh, Monday or Tuesday. If you get that, then Blackstone would be giving you a TD9 count bottom signal. Now, it is possible it had a TD9 count high, as you can see on the daily time frame. It's possible, DQ, that uh, yesterday was the low. It's possible. Why is it possible? Because when you get back to support, that can be a bottom. But since we are already in bar number eight out here, and you could get that more ideal uh, entry point, and along with the uh, weekly chart, where price is trading below last week's low, that would say the weekly chart to Stevie wants to go target the 147.27 level. I don't know if we'll get down there, but with regard to an entry point, why don't we come back to this on uh, Tuesday of next week, Monday or Tuesday of next week. Now, you have to write back to me to remind me of that, but um, that's what I would be looking at. Your second entry area that you're looking for is on ticker symbol ZIM. So in the case of ZIM, holy shnikes out there. What do we have? We have an island top on a daily time frame. That was the first holy shnikes that I took a look at. Now, we're nowhere near all-time highs or anything, but you still have that island top. What is an island top? So that's a great uh, that's a great uh, question out there. Let's uh, define an island top out here. I'll pull this chart off to the side. We're taking a look at the uh, trading session of September 30th. Now, the high of the prior session, the 27th out there, was 2513. The low of that session, the one on the 30th, was at 2515. 2515 versus um, versus 2513, a two penny gap. Well, then what takes place on the trading session of October 1st? Price gaps down. Those gaps created that island top. That is the most bearish candlestick formation known to mankind out there. Uh, what has transpired since then? Well, price pulled back and tested profile support, actually closed just below it yesterday. Uh, closed below support, you likely head to the next area support. Now, DQ, the area that price should target here, we're only looking at the daily time frame, is 1683. I'm not necessarily saying that's the uh, buy opportunity, but that is a place of support that could be a bottom. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, you're going to get a gigantic, ginormous Rose Mintum indicator top. With price trading into an area of support, near a support, it's a support zone between 1679 and 1819. Okay, so that's a beautiful thing. Let that daily time frame chart get back to that breakout level. Again, that breakout level 1663. Granted, that would get us below the bottom of that profile out there, but it might just be a tag, a test of rejection, and a move higher out there. You are going to go ahead and complete a TD9 count top at the end of this month out here. This suggests a move at least to the 16. 45 level. So with regard to Zim, again, this is one you're going to have to simply have to follow, get back to me to take a look at, but watch that 1683-ish area for, um, uh, and, then, and then follow back up with me if you would. So hope that helps you out, uh, DQ. Thanks for waiting an extra day. The next question also came in uh, late yesterday. It was from Mimi. Mimi wants to take a look at Occidental Petroleum. Occidental Petroleum formed a beautiful daily roads to indicator bottom back in the trading session of September 27th. And then on the uh, 20, on October the 1st, uh, price closed above the top of its profile. We closed above it two days ago, yesterday as well. It looks to me like price wants to go target 57.50. Now, that that is a very likely outcome as long as price closes today, Mimi, above its weekly oscillator and change line, which is at 54.98. We're at 55.17. 
So watch that 5498 area. If we close above it, it increases the odds of further rally. Again, 5757 is the daily target. The weekly target is at 5968. And on a monthly time frame, what price did last month was a test of the bottom of its bullish structured profile. We've rallied since. Uh, if price closes the month above the center of its profile, we're too far away from that to even know. But that would suggest a move to 61.97. So it does look like the Stevie, as long as price closed the day above that weekly red oscillator change line, we had higher. 57.57 would be that first target. So Mimi, I hope that that helped you out. And uh, thanks so much for uh, what we, we have had that same message yesterday, if that was the question. The message yesterday would have been to watch that weekly oscillator and change line. If that fails, in other words, price closes above it, then we head higher out there. Let's go to uh, Hector's question. And Hector's question is about the GDX. So hopefully uh, everybody was listening in on the, uh, I believe it was the first uh, segment of the show where we took a look at gold priced in all the major currencies. Now, we are not at new all-time highs today for gold priced in U.S. dollars, but we are with regard to every other major currencies and many of the uh, currencies inside the Middle East. That tells us about a, a global rally. The best rallies are when something is traded at new all-time highs in all, in, all, in all major currencies out there. Granted, we are not in U.S. dollars. That is not how tops are made. We don't top out in U.S. dollars first and then international currencies. Steve Rhodes with TFNM. We'll be right back. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading. Trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day, 
Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at the GDXs for Hector and Patty. Uh, you know, we got gold that is moving higher, but still we want to take a look at the GDX charts as well. We know about the directional correlation. And the directional correlation is simply with both trading higher or lower out there. Now, in the case of the GDX, what you first want to see this do, Hector and Patty, is get back above, close back above the bottom of its daily profile. Preferably do that today. 39.90 is the uh, number out there. If we close below that, well, we still don't have any real clear signal. But if we did close below the low of September 30th out there, and that low was at 39.35. That swing had 24 million shares. As an example today, we've done 7 million shares. We're sort of pushing higher. We we're pushing a little bit lower out there. But that key is that September 30th low. If price does close below 39.35, you will then trigger an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. So let's just take a look at what that is. Let's take a look at both sides of the trade out here. So let's draw in our A to B point and at this stage where the C point would be. And that gives us a price objective in the 38 and change level, maybe 38 and a quarter. That is not the call. Stevie is making. However, what's also really important is last week the GDX formed a Roachment indicator top. It did it with a bearish shooting star candle. We're getting confirmation. We're getting follow through this week. However, what that follow through has done, Hector and Patty, is it's made it way back to its oscillator and change line. It traded below it, but we're trading above it right now. And that's really the key is where is the close? The number is 39.56 at the moment. As long as price closes above that, then it's neutral because a bearish top would have found support at that oscillator and change line. So that's one level that you're going to watch at day's end. The monthly chart is all out bullish, period. We're in bar number eight. That doesn't really matter because it's not at the high. Um, uh, so everything here on the monthly chart is bullish. Uh, we're kind of neutral. We are not kind of neutral. We are neutral at the moment. And, of course, it depends upon today's close inside the GDX. But if price does hold that uh, oscillator and change line on the weekly time frame and we get a close above 39.90, then what price should do is move up to 40.57 out there. That's its oscillator and change line for its daily time frame. Above that is a resistance zone between 41.07 and 41.66. So your question was, which direction is the GDX headed uh, at this stage of the game? It does look to me like it's headed higher only because gold and silver – also look to be heading higher now in the case of gold what's really important here right we, we're, we're taking a look at gold and or take a look at the g let me just put up this chart here give me a moment this will populate we'll have gold silver and the gdx all simultaneously i probably should have put that up first but i didn't but uh but it's up now and what i was going to take a look at here is the key thing with regard to gold is also being able to take out its highs so it's got that td9 count top that top is the high of September 25th out there. That level is 26.9490. So we really need to take out that high. And then after that, 27.0870. So I would say the GDX is not out of the woods. It gets more out of the woods if we got gold were to take out uh, its TD9 count top as well as the top of its profile at 27.08. So Hector and Patty, I hope that your question was which way is it headed out there? Well, you know, I can't completely give you that uh, until we see. But what we do know are the parameters that would establish that gold would head higher or the uh, and the GDX would head higher, or we all have the parameters that the GDX would head lower as well. So I hope that helps you out. Have a fabulous and fantastic weekend. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Jambalaya inside the Tiger's Den is uh, up next. We'd like to take a look at VVR. So uh, give me a second. Let me close this chart. And we'll get to VVR. Steve's going to have to find it. I think it's chart number four. Let's see if this is it. And VBR is the Invesco Senior Income Trust. I have no idea what's inside it. No, that was not the chart. Let's go to the actual VBR charts out here. And now they will pop up on our screen. So first things first. Yesterday, VBR negated a daily TD9 count bottom. That says we had lower. Okay, head lower to where? Without looking at the daily time frame chart, GMI would be looking at 379. That's the weekly TD9 count breakout level. 
on a monthly time frame chart. VVI is headed to 375. We are trading below monthly profile support at 396. Um, we we're trading below last month's low. The uh, daily is only in bar number five. This thing is headed lower. You're looking for an entry point. Well, I would be looking in that 379, 375-ish area, but I'd be watching the daily time frame chart or bar number five. You could get some type of TD9 count bottom pattern next week out there. So maybe you and I, let's take a look at it again on the show, maybe Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Oh, it would have to be Wednesday. I'll be out of town next week, Thursday and Friday, and will not be able to host shows. So, Jim, if you could remember, remind me, let's take a look at this on Wednesday of next week and see where things have settled. But uh, I don't see a bottom six signal as we speak just yet we got to see how price handles those breakout levels um the next request that came in is from uh from uh glenn and glenn would like to take he's like he's, glenn wants to feel the love so stevie's going to give him the love on the stock charts here that's luv i believe that you entered a, a long position today so what do we need to be paying attention to here number one on a weekly time frame, you are right up against resistance, and resistance is at 31.38. So just know that. You'd love to see price close above that. If price were to close above that, well, first of all, let me just check this out here. Do we have an A to B equals CD pattern on the upside? The swing point is from September the 6th, 31 million shares. This week, we are at 41 million shares. Muy bueno. So you're going to get a A to B equals CD. Oh, shoot, that didn't work. Give me a moment. We're going to, we're going to go ahead and draw in the A to B point, and then we're just gonna copy, paste, and assemble. So here's our A to B line. Let's copy it, let's paste it, and now let's assemble it. And there we go. So you're gonna have a confirmed A to B equals CD pattern to the upside that would get you towards 3516. I would say it'd be higher than 3516 because that retracement is certainly much less than a point of uh, 618. So that next resistance area above the, well, Okay, you're going to have resistance up here at the uh, where the A to B equals CD pattern, the one to one would complete, and that's up at the 3518 area. But if you can close above that, then 3740 would be the price target. The daily time frame is the one that you've got to keep an eye on, um, because if we don't close above profile resistance this week, 3138, even though we would get a confirmed A to B equals CD pattern, what we might first be looking at is a further pullback. Why? So we have what is basically a bearish shooting star candle. Now there's a small gap uh, between yesterday's high, yesterday's high, 3095, this morning's low so far, 3101. That is not enough of a price difference to negate the shooting star candle. So it is definitely a shooting star out there. And that suggests that if this holds, price should at least pull back to support. And that would be at 3013 out there. Um, is it a guarantee that price is going to pull back based upon that shooting star? I can't guarantee you anything, unfortunately, but we can take a look at some intraday charts, see if there's some kind of signals out here. On the intraday chart, for a 30-minute time frame, uh, what I'd be watching for, I, I can uh, come up with an A to B equals CD pattern, but I'm not worried about that. I'm really more interested in what does price do if it pulls back and tests that oscillator and change line, 3095. If it closes below that, you're headed to 3026 or 3069 out there. So that's what I see in love. It looks good on the weekly. The daily says, uh, you know what it says? Southwest Airlines, you'd have some funny kind of thing that says, uh, be careful, put on your seatbelt, and you might get a uh, oxygen mask that falls. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits.
the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets, with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hey, welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at the Dow Transports. This is for Jambalaya inside our Tiger's Den. And uh, she specifically asked if I could um, could uh, just simply review what's taken place this week out here. And I absolutely will. We'll take a look at more than that as well. But from the weekly standpoint, what we can see is a level of 16,258.98. Specifically, 16,258.98. That is a uh, the TD9 count breakdown resistance area that formed back on August the 18th. So we're going all the way back to August out here. That line, look how many times we've tested this. And that's actually resistance February 16th on a weekly basis. March 29th. Um, July 19th, August the 2nd, and then the last three weeks out there. So what we have is the rallies are running right into resistance. It was clear resistance. Had we taken a look at this prior to today, we know that. And now what we have is price may close below its green oscillator and change on a 15.7076. That would then suggest, if it does that, that we should see a further retracement. Further retracement to where? I would have to say 15.532 would be a price target. That is the daily TD9 count breakout level. So I believe that uh, all the gyrations that you saw this week are nothing more than price first trying to take out the resistance, the 16,258 area to 16,259 area. It wasn't able to do that. You can't bust them to the upside. Now it's trying to bust them to the downside. Just kind of logical stuff out there. Now, if price did close below 15,532, then we would likely head back to this uh, candle swing point from uh, September the 11th out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at the transports, Jim. I hope that helped you out. And uh, thanks so much for your request. Uh, we've got another request out here. This is from Dan inside the Tiger's Den. would like to take a look at ticker symbol SND. So let's get that up on our screens out here. And let's go see what it is doing. SND is... SND. Oh, and we're looking at this because of a big buyback that they announced as well as a dividend, which is this is Smart Sand Inc. out there. So we can see that it's uh, it's uh, taking out a B point out here, maybe setting up an A to B equals CD point, uh, CD pattern on the uh, daily time frame. So let's go draw that in out here. Uh, um, give me a moment. So here is our, our A point starts at the TD9 count bottom. And that's going to run all the way up to the high of the trading day of uh, August 30th. Let's uh, copy that. Roger Rabbit. Let's paste that. Now let's go ahead and assemble it. 
That says that the one to one A to B equals C D gets us back to the recent highs out here from back in July up at the two thirty six area. I am not saying that price is going to stop there. I'm just saying that is the initial price target out here. Um, that's what the daily time frame is telling us. A uh, volume today is uh, so far 473,000, taking out 39,000 out there. So confirmed A to B equals C D pattern the upside. The weekly chart shows that price is going to go ahead and close above the top of its weekly profile. It will likely close above the top of its profile. Now, in order to do that, it needs to close above 217. That would be a bullish outcome. It suggests that we had higher. But when we take a look at sand here, you can really see that you know you've got some additional swing points. One you're trading into as we speak right now. That's from May 3rd. The other one that you're trading into, no, you're about to get to it, is the uh, swing point from September 22nd. A little over a million shares there. This week we're moving towards it with 1.5 million shares. I would say more likely than not, sand is at least going to go target that September 26th, 22nd swing point between 229 and 248. That is the weekly message. Let's go see what we have out here on the monthly time frame. Monthly time frame, not much more to add, really, quite frankly. So what is this doing? You've got a nice confirmed A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. So uh, it should uh, complete that. And then we'll have to take a look as price gets back towards those swings in July and the swing in May out there as to what it may, in fact, be doing. Um, so McGuppy, yeah, thanks. I appreciate that, McGuppy. Uh, 10.56 a.m. Ah, I did miss it. Ah, ah, I see it now, though. Okay. Um, boy, that's a lot to read through. But let's... Uh, OHI. So let's get OHI up on our screen. And sorry, I did overlook that. No idea why, um, but I did. And I usually don't do that. Uh, I hate overlooking things. When you take the time to make a, a request, boy, I hate it if I uh, don't get to it. Let's take a look at what uh, the o OHI is doing out here. OHI is trading right now at 39.56. It's testing the bottom of its profile. This Omega Healthcare. I'd say if it closes below the bottom of its profile, the bottom of that profile is at the uh, 39.58 level. We're at 56, two pennies. If it closes below that, odds would favor a move to 39.19. Now, there's an A to B equal CD pattern out here. The uh, B point is the day of September 27th. The volume there was 1.4 million shares. We are trading, close below it yesterday. Let me see here. 39.98. Yesterday's close was, not yesterday, the day before was uh, 40.39, so that didn't close below it. Um, today's volume on this is 481,000 shares out there, and uh, that's, going to, well, that's going against 1.4 million. So it does look like you have a confirmed A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. Let's try to uh, write, well, hold your horses here, Steve. No, you, you do have one. So let's, uh, let's draw this in here. Give me a moment. Let's get to this little bar. Here we go. So our A point is the high of September 18th. The B point is the low from September 27th. Let's copy. Let's paste. And now let's go assemble that. And so then, yeah, that, you know, that gets us back basically to where we're at today. That would say if you were to get a bullish reversal, I mean, we're pretty close. If we get a bullish reversal candle, that confirms a Gartley buy pattern out there. Uh, short of that, Price still may target that 39.19 level. On the weekly time frame chart, what you like here is you have a TD9 count top, and its move to the downside may be done. And the reason is because it's testing the oscillator and change line. Trading in between a new profile that formed last week out there, but the oscillator and change line printing out at 39.44. Dan, I would watch 39.44 for a message. Uh, now, this is uh, from McGuppy. I would watch that 39.44 level. Uh, if that, in fact, holds... And you can then, now not today, so we'd be probably talking on Monday, you get a bullish reversal candle. That would be con your confirmation of a uh, of a buy point out there. I don't know that that's what you were looking for. Monthly chart uh, looks uh, looks very good. You also want to take a BHP. So let's get a BHP. I'm just looking at the symbols, not just trying to read through everything. I will do that after the uh after we get to the break out there. But hopefully I'm providing you with the information that you're looking at. You had 39.20 for uh, 
previous low on the 58. And anyway, hopefully that information I'm giving you is assisting you. Now, on BHP, BHP completed a TD9 count top three days ago and has since moved lower. In fact, we gapped to the downside. This has a island top out here. That island top was this, uh, what stranded on Gilligan's Island are the trading sessions of September 27th through uh, so October the 2nd out there. So you got an island top and a TD9 count pattern. I would suggest that BHP is headed towards support, which is between 59.88 and, uh, I'm sorry, at uh, 59.67 and 59.93. The weekly chart looks very good. The monthly chart is a consolidation with inside its profiles. That's between support at 49.33 and resistance up at 63.82, which we've gotten pretty close to. We didn't get all the way up there um, um, in this week, but we got pretty darn close. So I would say at this stage here, you are looking for does it get to 58? Uh, it may, but that 59.66-ish area out there is the first key level of support. Well, really, got 59.93 to 59.66. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're going to take a look at the 10-year uh, note here. This is also for um, uh, from Guppy inside the uh, Tiger's Den. And uh, so this is formed an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. You can see we are beyond the one-to-one -one price level. There is, it's negated a TD9 
uh, did not have a titty nine count bottom. So uh, so forget forget that last statement. Um, so this needs a bullish reversal candle in order to generate a buy the D point pattern. Short of that, the next price target for the uh, ten year note is down at the one eleven oh six area out there. That is its next uh, TD nine count breakout level. We are trading below. The uh, bottom of its weekly profile, that's a profile that formed last week. That suggests lower price. Now, this is saying you could even get back to the 109.15 level. So what's that saying for rates? That says rates are headed higher with the 10-year uh, note headed lower out there. I believe that was your question. So no bottom signal whatsoever. If we take like, consecutive days to the upside, to the downside, we are in bar number three today. Um we have seen since the high that formed back here on September 11th, one bar number three moved to the downside. And then we had kind of a sideways move out there, a two bar move to the downside, one, a little bit of sideways move. So you could easily see, just based upon this, here's some other two and three bars, um, uh, that you could easily see some type of short term. Uh, bottom today, meaning one day, maybe one or a couple days, possibly just some sideways movement out there. We do not have that signal just yet. If we look at a 30 minute time frame chart out here, what do we see? Um, you know, we see that we're trading below support. So there's no signal here of a uh, bottom. So maybe that comes on uh, Monday out there. That's what I see when I take a look at the 10 year. So sorry that I overlooked your uh, request at 1056, but we got it done by 1156. And that is a beautiful thing. So let's just take one quick peek out here while we're getting ready to uh, end the show. We'll go over to the uh, nine panel market update uh, uh, screen, see if there's anything here worth noting. And uh, we can see here that uh, gold is trading a little bit lower. Um, folks, gold is trading higher in every major currency out there. So the only sellers out here are the lonely ones in terms of U.S. dollars. The buyers, they're most certainly overseas. Again, tops do not form with highs in international currencies, but not in the U.S. dollar. Folks, take care. Have a fabulous weekend. I look forward to seeing you on Marvelous Monday. Be safe out there.